The next segment that we're going to review is the left anterior descending artery. We've already reviewed the fact that the left anterior descending artery, abbreviated as the LAD, stays at the anterior interventricular sulcus of the heart. And so we can see uh, here that it originates at the bifurcation of the left main or LMA artery and stays in that sulcus approaching the cardiac apex. We can follow it down here as it approaches the cardiac apex. Now there's, uh, again, a significant amount of variability in the coverage of the LAD. We, in some patients, may find that the LAD uh, kind of peters out before it reaches the apex. In other patients, it may extend all the way to the apex and terminate there. And in other patients, we can actually see it wrap all the way around the, to the apex and even supply the inferior surface of the heart. The branches of the LAD are of two main varieties. Uh, we'll see septal perforators. There's our first septal perforator right here, which extend on the axial plane. They will look like they're going off of the anterior or right aspect of the LAD, extending downward into the muscular septum. So we can see the first septal perforator here. And as we follow the vessel down, we can see additional septal perforators. There's a small one there that go down. The septal perforators are generally going to be smaller and less well perceived than the next category of branches of the LAD. And that is your diagonal branches. As we follow the LAD here, we can see that the diagonal branches extend off to the left aspect of the LAD. And as we follow them out, we can see that they stay over the left ventricular free wall and they get their name from you know branching diagonally off of the LAD to cover the left ventricular free wall. In this patient we can see that there's a prominent first diagonal branch or D1 branch and as we follow the LAD down uh, we don't really make out a really perceptible second diagonal or D2 branch. Now the vessels that we see by coronary CTA are really only going to be major vessels um, if we were to have the high spatial resolution of uh, catheter angiography, uh, there are actually many smaller vessels that exist that are just below the resolution capabilities of CTA. So next when we describe a lesion at the LAD, it's important that we're all on the same page in terms of identifying its location. So there's a segmental nomenclature for the LAD. We divide the LAD into the proximal, mid, and distal segments. There are a number of distal, there are a number of schools of thoughts regarding exactly how you do that division. Uh, for the purpose of reporting for CTA, we choose to use the diagonal branches as the landmarks that separate the, the different segments. So in this patient, the proximal LAD is identified from the origin of the LAD at the bifurcation of the LMA, and it extends all the way until the origin of the first diagonal artery. So we can follow it here on the axial plane. We would then take the next segment of the LAD or the mid LAD to be from the origin of the first diagonal artery to the origin of the second diagonal artery. So if we were to see another diagonal artery in this patient extend off over the free wall of the left ventricle, that would show us the end of the mid segment of the LAD, but frequently you'll find patients that do not have a visible second diagonal artery such as this patient, so what to do? Well, what we do is we take the distance from the origin of the D1 to the most distal portion of the vessel where we see it um, you know, as far out, and we say, okay, well, that's going to be the mid and distal segment, so we'll just take that distance and cut it in half, and that'll be our delineation of the mid and distal segments. So we would probably call from the origin of the first diagonal to about right here, the mid segment, and then from that location all the way down to the termination of the LAD would be the distal segment. So again, we've now covered the left anterior descending artery originating from the bifurcation of the LAD, having both septal perforator branches as well as diagonal branches, and divided into three segments, proximal, mid, and distal, using the diagonal branches as the landmarks.